So again, if you just joined us and you plan to, to follow along on your laptop, uh, there's a link there. It's in the slides. It's also online, uh, which will take you to the, to the lab, the workshop, and the instructions. There, there's, um, there's a pre-work portion of the workshop. So again, if you do want to follow along and you want to test some of these things out, um, you'll be able to sign up for, for a Watson account and a free trial and, and play around with some language models too. And if anyone has any issues signing up or looking for the link or uh, any issues at all, just let me know. Hopefully, those of you who have made it there, you probably already started clicking around and seeing um, and maybe even throwing some prompts at some random language model already. Uh, but as an overview, I'll talk a bit about the lab itself. Uh, hopefully that's, that's seeable, but everyone should also have a tab open with the lab itself just because um, some of the instructions are there and some of the exercises that we'll go through are there. So the purpose of this lab is basically just to have fun. I mean, we're just trying to, to throw prompts at some language models and learn a bit about how to, to tune our prompts to get some of the output that we want. Uh, we'll learn some basic examples of how to, how to do just that. Uh, we'll talk a bit about some of the techniques and maybe some of the parameters that you can play around with uh, to kind of tune your output. And, and we'll go from like a very simple output and try to make, um, you know, generate some text that, that we could actually do something with or learn something from. So uh, here I'm just showing the lab itself. Uh, you've probably all seen this page, but basically if you click on workshop, Again, you're, you've taken to the pre-work, and if we click on lab one, lab one is a bit uh, kind of a read-through type of lab, but in, in our case, I'm gonna actually uh, show most of, um, most of what's on here, I'm gonna actually demo, so you don't necessarily have to read through this yourself, but all the information that I go through is there, so on your own time, you'll always have this free trial uh, and access to it, so you'll always be able to kind of go through and, and look at some of these, these um, the ideas that are presented here. And then in lab two, it's more of kind of an exercise-based lab where there's 10 um, prompts or ideas, uh, exercises, and along with some example answers if you click it. Um, and each of them are, are a different task. So for example, one's uh, generating maybe some creative sentences, another one's summarizing a transcript and so on. Uh, this part we'll, we'll try to do individually, but for the first, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, uh, we'll, go through, we'll go through lab one and, and the prompt lab itself. So let me just sign back in here. You're all just going to watch me go through the same process that you have. No, you would be able to get there from, from IBM Cloud. Uh, there's an easier way to get there, but I try to stick to the, the pre-work instructions to not, you know. IBM Cloud comes with it, all of the other buttons and all the other products that are there, the whole suite. So uh, and rather than bog down in all those details, I'd rather just show this, you know? So you've all, or at least most of you have seen this page and you're on this page at some point. And the, there's a lot that you could do here. This is watsonx.ai. You can train models, tune models. Um, you have notebooks and, and all of these things. But the thing that we're gonna actually play around in is prompt lab, and that's this first, uh, this first button here. Experiment with foundation models and build prompts. That sounds ex like exactly what we wanna do. So again, uh, if you're on prompt lab, hopefully follow along. Even some of the text that I put in, hopefully you will also uh, type in and see what, what output you get. I think that's kind of a fun part of language models is, is kind of the comparison um, of, of what we get and what, what our output is. So this is Prompt Lab, and Prompt Lab, again, it's part of watsonx.ai, and it's basically uh, a fun way of being able to experiment with a bunch of different models, play with a bunch of different parameters, um, 
and, and there's sample prompts, there's you know, the ability to save prompts and all of these things. And this will be the first view when you do open up Prompt Lab. And you can see this is called the structure view. And just let me know if you want me to zoom in more, but uh, I'll kind of be zooming in and out. Oops, I accidentally went back. I'll be zooming in and out like this uh, throughout. So hopefully that'll be visible when I am kind of focusing on a specific part. But this is the structured view. And at a glance, this is what we see. We see the setup, we see somewhere to put our instruction. And in the gray text, we see uh, this is where we would actually put, you know, again, the instruction, summarize the transcript, uh, tell me a funny story, whatever the prompt might be, this is where we would put it in the structured view. Here we have some examples. So for example, if you wanted to summarize a transcript, this input example would be an, a, a sample transcript and you would actually put in the output. And so you would put your summary to, of the transcript uh, and that would be an example that's passed to the language model uh, for it to actually learn from or, or learn some structure from. And then here you would be putting in your, your test input and, and generating your test output. Uh, but for this lab, or at least this demo, you know, all of you can feel free to use the structured view if you'd like to try it. But we'll go to the free form view. And the free form view, we simply see a text box. And we see a pretty important reminder here, which is the fact that this is not a chat interface, right? How many of us have played with ChatGPT at some point, right? So we all kind of expect, especially with something as big as ChatGPT, we're expecting some very coherent responses, uh, you know, uh, give me an itinerary for this certain country or something, and, and it gives us a nice list of, of responses. But in this case, this is not a chat interface. This is, you have to kind of think of these language models when you're, when you're prompting them in this fashion as text generation or sentence completion, or, you know, you have to kind of think of it like that. Uh, and so right away, like, let's, let's try a prompt and, and we'll try with something simple. Again, this is all kind of covered in lab one, but I'm just going to be talking through as we do it. List ideas to start a dog walking business, right? And again, in our experience of chatbots and chat interfaces, we might expect a list, maybe a numbered list of, of good ideas to start that type of business. And when we click generate right away, it actually spits out the exact same thing that we said, you know? And again, try it yourself, see if you get something different. You probably won't, uh, but there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, it's where it generated it. If I had my cursor up here, right at the end of the sentence and I click generate, in this case, it would have generated right there. So, you know, that's just a, a small thing, but where we, we kind of place our, our new line and our cursor, that's where it's going to generate it. Uh, so now we have to think about a few things. You know, first of all, why are we just getting back, um, you know, this, 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 this output? It obviously doesn't help us. It's not what we wanted. Uh, so now we have to start thinking about the prompt itself. Uh, but there's a few things to think about. There's the prompt itself. Um, we'll get into kind of sharing examples with the model and trying to, to help it or guide it to give us our, um, a, a good response. But the first thing I'll point out is the top here where it tells us which model we're actually playing around with uh, or, or you know, we're, we're sending requests to. Uh, the default, I think, for, for everyone should be this Flan UL2 model. And, and if you open that up and you click View All Foundation Models, this is, I think, one of the very fun things of Prompt Lab is that you have all of these models at a glance and, and you're able to, to do exactly as I did with each of these. And so we have all of these models to choose from. And so the first thing when it comes to, you know, I want some output from a large language model is which model are you going to use? Because some models are specified to a certain task. You know, some might be, um, experts at, at kind of code generation. Another one might be more instructions or, or creative language models, right? So it's very possible that you're simply using the wrong model for this task. For example, if I click on one of these, such as StarCoder, as the name kind of suggests, this is a model for code generation. And if you actually scroll down, you'll see at a high level view um, a model card or a bunch of information about the model, maybe how it was trained, 
how big it is, uh, its intended uses, and sometimes there's even hints in these model cards. For example, this tells us that it's not an instruction model and commands like write a function that da 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 do not work well, right? So sometimes there are, hint there are hints there with the models itself. Uh, you could even see Llama 2. If we actually just open this one up and we click select model, let's see how different our output would be if I just click generate here with the same prompt. We actually... So in this case, I actually clicked on Llama 2, this, top, this bottom left. And again, you could choose any model, but if you're really following along, I'm choosing this Llama 2 model. And then at the bottom right, there's a select model button. And so that'll actually select the model. And at the top right now, we can see which model we're working with. And when we click generate at that point, we can see we, we get much different output. Already we're getting, I guess, you know, we can probably consider that better output. Research the market, understand the demand for dog walking services in your area and. Uh, so it's much better, we're using a much bigger model uh, but I'll point out here that we can see that the, the, the output cut off for some reason. And theoretically, maybe the model decided that that's the end of the sentence. But how do we know for sure? Well, at the bottom left of the text box, I'll just zoom in there and we see the more. Yeah. OK, cool. Uh, so we'll actually see the stop reason here. And here, the stop reason is max tokens parameter reached. Um, other situations, for example, might be maybe end of generation reached or end of output reached, something like that. That would tell you that the model actually decided to finish its sentence there. But here we have max tokens parameter reached. We have some information about the tokens, right? 14 input tokens, 20 generated tokens, uh, 34 out of these 4,096 tokens. A lot of information down there. And basically, if you don't know, tokens are uh, kind of like the basic unit of uh, characters or, or data that a model uses as input and output. So when you're passing a model an entire sentence, it goes through a process of tokenization at some point. And this is, could be up to the model, it could be up to the scientist, whatever it is. But it'll actually create subsets of, those, of that data. So it could be three characters, it could be a whole word, it could be the whole sentence, and so on. In our case, we can kind of think of it as a, as a short word. So maybe you see something like 14 input, you might think, okay, 14 short words, maybe 14 four character splices, something like that. But we see 20 generated, and again, we saw that this, this output cut off. And so now at this point, we'll open up the parameters, the model parameters button here, which is on the top right. And if we open that up, there's a ribbon of the model parameters that that pops open. And here now we have even more levers and buttons to press. At the bottom of that, we see max tokens. And I'll only point this one out for now. But of course, this max tokens is 20. As we saw, our, our output actually stopped at 20 tokens. And so now we can up this to whatever we want, maybe 50. You could try 100, 150. Um, but there's different reasons, of course, for, for different numbers. We'll keep it at 50 because of um, because usually, in, in our cases, at least that, that, that takes. But if you wanted a longer story, for example, you might do 150. Uh, if you find your model is, is spewing out too much output and, and going on tangents or something like that, you might want to bring those tokens down. The minimum tokens, of course, does the opposite. It, it uh, either forces the model to at least output a certain number of tokens. Um, or none at all. And so we'll leave that at zero. So now let's regenerate this and see what happens. So now we, we see that it, it continued. So research the market, understand demand for dog walking services, and identify your target market. And then there's a number two, develop a business plan and so on. So, you know, it's, it's giving us a full coherent idea uh, and a couple of ideas, and that's great. I'm going to go back to the default model where we were getting some poor output, right? This Flan UL2 model. And again, when I click generate here, 
we're going to get that output that we got in the first in the first place. And that's list ideas to start a dog walking business. So how do we make this prompt better? Because I know that this 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 language model is an instruction based model. It's a pretty general model. Again, if you click on on um, on the model card itself, it'll actually tell you some information. And even at the top, it gives you these these categories. It tells you at a glance: question answering, summarization, um, generation, extraction, and so on. So. In theory, this model is a pretty good one to, to use for this, this case. And that's where we're going to get into our, our maybe first thing, and that's, that's actually changing the prompt itself, of course. It's a bit obvious, but list ideas to start a dog walking business is, um, it could be more descriptive and all of these things, but maybe we want a numbered list. And so what we want to do is we want to kind of nudge a model to, to output kind of the things that we want. The same way maybe in conversation you might, uh, you know, shape the way you say something because you want the other person to, to, to speak about a topic in a certain way. So if you think of it in terms of kind of nudging or prompting a model to do something, we actually include this number one. Uh, we could include this number one in this list ideas to start a dog walking business because hopefully that kind of implies that we want a numbered list, right? And we generate here and we shouldn't, or as expected, it actually doesn't get much better. It just says dog walking, right? It is different output than before, and now we have some more input tokens. We have 13 now, but uh, still no good. So now when we're giving, um, when we're kind of satisfied with this prompt, again, this prompt is a bit vague. It's very specific and, and short, but we actually get into what's called uh, one-shot prompting. Uh, it's also known as few shot prompting, multi shot prompting. It basically just refers to the idea of actually providing a model with an example of what you want. And so in lab one, uh, maybe towards the, the, you know, towards the top of the page, there, there's a place, there's an example here that, that's there for you to copy and paste. And this is what I mean by an example. Here we have um, a different topic. We have list ideas to start a lemonade business. Number one, set up a lemonade stand, partner with a restaurant, arrange a celebrity to endorse the lemonade. Those are three good ideas to start a lemonade business, somewhat abstract, a bit creative. And then there's our original prompt here, list ideas to start a dog walking business with our number one. And so again, this is the idea of one shot prompting. We're now not just giving it an example of um, you know, dog walking business ideas, but we're giving the language model uh, a structured example of what we expect as output, right? So if I list ideas to start a lemonade business, I want three ideas or numbered ideas about how to do that. And so now what happens when we click generate? All of a sudden we're getting a much better response than before, I think we can probably all agree. There's a few things here though. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, the ideas are pretty good. Get a dog walking certification, ad advertise in local papers, business license, and so on. Those are, those are all good ideas, and if you remember our very first prompt, we were actually just getting it to, to respond, or, or it was just repeating exactly what we gave it. I wonder if we can fix this thing, though. You know, it, it seems like it decided to give a, the one anyways, and if we get rid of that one, and maybe don't pass it the one, let's see what happens. And again, if you are following along, like, be, feel free to try your own things too as I'm talking and just you know, play around with it because it's, it's meant to be uh, a, kind of a creative exercise and, and all the different outputs that you can get. It's, it's, um, you can just see here even how much it varies. That number one actually turned out to be a pretty maybe important piece of our input because here it just says start by walking your dogs in, in your neighborhood. That's a good idea. Yes? Right. Right, exactly. And I mean, the idea here is that this is the base model, right? Uh, ChatGPT is a bunch of models and, um, and a very curated type of model. And it's also much, much larger. So this is only 20 billion. I forget how much ChatGPT is, but it's, you know, in, over the, it's bigger than all of these models here. 
And um, there's reasons for using smaller models and being able to kind of prompt them in this way to get some output. For example, safety, uh, without the generalization, um, like without using these like overly generalized models, uh, you kind of have a, a smaller surface of attack, for example, for, with things like prompt injection, um, things like bias, you know, so there, there are these uh, use cases for using these more specific smaller models that can be fine um, tuned towards a very specific task. For example, if you can think of, I don't know, in a business, maybe um, um, like an HR agent, uh, something like that, without, that might have access to even things like uh, employee information. And, and the, the smaller it is and the more concise it is towards a specified task, the less chance there is at, at these kind of um, malicious attempts to, to, to get it to spit out more information than it's supposed to or, or, or do something like that. That being said, um, this is, uh, it's true that, you know, it, I, I basically just want to show that you take these, these models, which are not like these chat GPT models, um, you see the output that it gets, which can be absolute, can be gibberish and, and, and not good. But just by providing a simple example, now we've, 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 I think, gotten to a much better place where all of a sudden we're getting all of these ideas. Um, so, with that said, uh, the next thing that we can do is um, we can actually start talking about some of these model parameters on the right as well. So, we're listing ideas to start a dog walking business, and again, I'll just generate it here. We have some um, good ideas to start that. And Again, another way of kind of playing with these models is, is you know, we've, we've chosen a model, so you want to choose a model for your task. We've provided an example to kind of prompt the, the model to use some of that structure and information for its response and its, its text generation. And now we can get into the model parameters if we want to really get into the kind of the fine tuning or, or cherry on top type of, of playing around with this output. And we see decoding. So decoding is basically the, the, the method that a model uses to output its, um, to generate its output. And in Imprompt Lab, you have all of these information buttons as well. You can click on this information button and, and it'll give you a hint as to, to what to do with these. For example, set decoding to greedy to always select words with the highest probability. So it'll always kind of be maybe on topic, um, very succinct, uh, Typically, greedy is kind of used for more succinct, kind of fact-based um, responses, right? Well, if you set the decoding to sampling, there's a lot more randomness involved in the, in the generation. So you might customize the variability of the word selection. So you might use sampling in, in cases like more creativity, like you want, you want more um, um, abstract answers or uh, more randomness and variance in the response. You also have this repetition penalty. We didn't see it here, but sometimes the output can, can repeat itself. Maybe it'll give you the, the same instruction over and over. Uh, maybe it repeats what you've told it. Uh, and that's what this repetition penalty is for. So if you ever saw that behavior, you could actually play with this variable. You could set it to two, which is the strongest penalty for repetition, or to one. And of course, any, anything in between as well. But in one, you would have... Um, uh, no penalty at all, and that's, that's described here. 1.0 means no penalty. You also have this stopping criteria in this ribbon. And the stopping criteria is to actually control when to stop generating output. Uh, sometimes, as I mentioned before, uh, especially with the, the bigger models like a Llama 2, I could ask it for, for, for um, and maybe we'll see it in the exercises. I could ask it for ideas for a dog walking business, and once it gives it to me, it might go on and start giving me ideas for a different unrelated business as well. Uh, and it might do so by maybe giving me the list of ideas, uh, and then in a new paragraph, giving me the next list of ideas about a completely unrelated topic. Mm -hmm. So that's something for stop sequences where I could make sure a new line in the output uh, that's being generated would actually stop the, the, the model from continuing to generate output. And so you would do that by, for example, these are two carriage returns and adding the sequence there. Uh, and, and I'm just showing you these uh, things that you can do too because if you do work through lab two and you kind of play around with some of these, these 
creative exercises, these are the things that you can do to try to, you know, manipulate your output and, and generate something that you're satisfied with. So if we change this to greedy, we'll see new variables come up. And a couple of these um, aren't, are, are kind of more uh, probability-based, you know, and uh, bless you, there's, there's some um, information about these variables in the lab one writings itself, but the one I want to focus on is temperature because I think this is the most, um, this is the one we can have fun with, which is actually controlling the creativity of the generated text. So the more you play with this temperature, the more you add, the more maybe randomness uh, the, output, the output contains. So let's try this now. So I've, I haven't even uh, touched any of these variables yet. I did change this to sampling and let's just see how different our output will be. And right away we see that it's much different. Uh, we can actually see at the bottom left that the max tokens parameter was reached. So this output was longer than 50 tokens. Again, we can, we can up that if we want. But let's see, get a small leash, collar, and some dog treats. Make a list of your best friends, local businesses. So these are good ideas on topic, but we can probably agree that they're way more creative. Right? And that's what sampling does. This is, this is kind of the idea that we're now getting um, some more variance in our responses. It's less uh, kind of succinct and, and concise and so on. If we put temperature all the way to two and we generate it here, what do we see? We see that the output changes. Your charges can help you make ends balance without going to debt collectors. Also take advantage. All of a sudden, it's gone completely off topic. Uh, and in some cases, you might even get gibberish, so like a sentence that doesn't necessarily make sense, maybe typos and so on. So that's, that's the problem with temperature and, and, and including randomness into your output uh, because too much can, can actually you know, lead to unexpected um, um, output. So uh, another thing I guess I'll, I'll show with sampling here is this random seed variable. Uh, one of the thing with sampling is that every time that you generate, you'll actually get different output. And so when it comes to reproducibility, of course, that's not a good thing. And so that's what this random seed is for. So you could input any number, um, and that would be your, your, your random seed for, for the sampling, and that would ensure that uh, there's some reproducibility in your output. So if you continue to use this random seed, you would actually be able to see that this output comes out again. So, uh, I think that's just about everything that I wanted to cover, at least in lab one. This again, kind of, oh, yep. What's K? So K, that's where you get into these, um, these kind of probability or math, math, um, you know, like um, based type of, of variables. Uh, so by selecting K words with the highest probabilities at each step. So. It just has to do with the probability of which words that this, this, uh, this model will choose. Uh, there's some information there. There's even links in the lab itself that'll take you to some websites that go into much more detail if you are interested in kind of the, the real like inner workings and research papers that, that come up with, with these, uh, these variables and these, these decoding methods. Um, so if you're all following along or if, for any of you who are following along, you can actually go to lab two in this Watson X prompt lab. Um, if you need the link again, please just let me know. But in this lab two, as I mentioned before, there are a bunch of exercises. And these are what the exercises look like. We can go through number one together, and then from there we can uh, try it ourselves if we're interested, and I'll, I'll walk around if anybody needs any help or, or even wants to share their output with me. Um, you can absolutely do that. But this first case, this is what it looks like. It'll be, we have, uh, the task is to generate. So we're just generating some creative sentences about donkeys. Uh, you can use the examples below to help. So of course, that's a prompt to, to use, you know, one-shot prompting or, or more uh, to kind of get the, the information that you want. And uh, the thing about these exercises too is use whatever model you want. If you want to use Llama 2, which will give you those big creative examples, uh, you can use that. If you want to try to use one of these smaller um, models like I, I exemplified and, and build up your, 
your answer, you know, do that as well. If you click this ribbon, it'll actually show you an example uh, answer with some output. But this is maybe how we would take, tackle this one. So, you know, let's try it. If we go, uh, so what's the prompt here? Three creative sentences about donkeys, right? So I could say, three sentences about talkies. <laughs> we could see that the, the AI guardrails or the, the filter actually decides that this is uh, not a good response or not a good input. And the idea here, of course, is to use the examples uh, because the examples will, will, especially with this Flan UL2 model, help quite a bit with the, with the output. Uh, let's see. Yes. Right, yeah. I, I think that happens in the training of it, but when you actually want specific structure in your output, that's kind of what these examples are for. Uh, these are more just guiding it to, to, to output in the way that you want it to. But all of the examples that it's gotten in the past, and you can read about its training, you know, in these model cards and stuff, um, that's where it's getting all of the general examples for all of the different tasks that it can do, right? You don't necessarily train just to get this you know, dotted list of, of, or numbered list of ideas about donkeys or puppies or whatever it is. Uh, that's what the fine tuning is for. Um, and that's where these examples come in, okay? Sorry, what was that? Uh, I got a good response. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good. Well, let's see, yeah. Now, did you use the 70 billion or 13 billion? 70? Yeah. And even here, sometimes this even tells you the hint of uh, this model works better if you provide at least one example. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. I haven't seen that before, and at least when I'm playing around with these. But okay, so yeah, here we have the two sentences, and I, I hit the maximum token parameter. So maybe in this case, I would um, up the token, the max tokens, and get more information, uh, more output. Uh, and here, yeah, these are these are good sentences. So that's why Llama two is definitely a, a very easy. You know, it's it's much bigger than the other models. You can see that it's a 70 billion parameter model. Um, some of these are smaller, 13 billion, 7 billion, and so on. So of course, the smaller models are a bit more, or require a bit more prompting and, and tuning. Um, and, and yeah, so that's good. Yeah, there you go. And which model are you using there? Okay, okay. Yeah, and you know, you have to get creative with your prompts too. It's not just, I mean, in these cases, I've, I've just given um, three sentences about puppies and then I just say th uh, three sentences about whatever else. Um, but you can also say something like, three numbered sentences or three numbered creative sentences. You know, you add some descriptive words to actually continue to tune these, the, the output here. Um, for example, I'll actually show you the, I think that the, the example answer is a bit interesting because the example answer is, um, you know, so it starts with, hopefully that's, that's legible, but it starts with write three sentences about a topic that I give you. Sentences should be preempted with a number, right? That's, that's a certain language and that's very instruction based. Um, and, and this one's using the Flan UL2 model as well. 
And here it actually gives both examples, so three, three sentences about puppies, and it also gives three sentences about kittens. Um, but what I find interesting about this one is that it even includes example one uh, and example two. So it's kind of like maybe if you, you know, any developers here or something like you're thinking of, of um, almost like it's like bracketing your, your example because at the end here it says the output should be three sentences long Output structure should mirror example one and example two. So those are almost like callbacks to uh, the examples that I provided above. And I've kind of labeled them using example one and example two uh, before the actual examples itself. So this might not be exactly what you thought of or, or how you'd think about you know, creating a prompt, but it can get as, as kind of structured uh, as this. And with these, these lines where at the top, I'm, I'm telling it write three sentences. And then at the bottom, I'm giving more information or more sentences uh, that, that hopefully instruct the model. So, um, so then we have the rewrite example. I won't go through it. Hopefully, you know, if you're interested, you're trying it out yourself and, and I'll kind of walk around at this point, but um, in this rewrite model, we're, we're actually converting code. And so the first thing here, of course, is that there is a code generation model called StarCoder. Uh, and it's possible that other models work as well. Uh, but StarCoder is actually meant for generating code. And, and that would be interesting if, if, if you're interested to actually try that model out and see what its output is. And even see, you know, if you ask it to list ideas about dog walking business, see what comes out. Uh, it probably will spit back out, you know, some, some, some code or, or HTML text of some kind. But, but yeah. Um, and, and anyways, I'll walk around at this point, uh, and whoever, if, if somebody still hasn't signed up or, or wants to sign up or got stuck, I can help them out as well. Um, just raise your hand if you have any questions. 